79 by Smashing Pumpkins. I got off to a slow late start today. I was I started off my day with some multitasking, which means not getting anything done. But now I'm here, you're here, let's get going, shall we? This song is tuned down a half step, but I am currently in standard tuning. On the recording, when Billy Corgan or the Smashing Pumpkins play it live, they have it tuned down a half step to E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. I'm gonna teach it to you just in standard E, A, D, G, B, E tuning, because then we don't have to detune. It's gonna save us all some time. We just learn it, tune to normal, and then later on, after you know the song, you can tune it down and it'll sound just like the recording. It's gonna be a great time. Let's get started, shall we? We need to start with this main riff. So friends and relatives, let's get going. Uh, we need the top string open. Top low E string open. Pointer finger on the sixth fret of the A string, the second string from the top. Use the tip of your finger to play the sixth fret and then use the pad of your finger right below that to mute the D string, the third string from the top. Then you're gonna play the eighth fret on the G string, the third string from the bottom. I personally like to use my pinky to play that eighth fret on the G string. Billy Corgan, the lead guy from the Smashing Pumpkins, uses his ring finger. Probably a better idea, but you know what? I'm in the habit of using my pinky, so that's what I'm mostly gonna do. Then the bottom two strings, the B and E string, if they're open, that's fine. But if they're kind of muted by your other fingers, that's fine too. They're not really important for this main riff. We're just gonna kind of try not to play them. We've got this ready to go. So it's zero, six, mute, eight, and then the bottom two are just kind of muted. You are going to strum down seven times. We're aiming just for those top four strings, but if you only hit three or if you hit all six sometimes, no big deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a very cool sounding chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have to add another part. Are you ready for this? So we're gonna take this shape with our hands, the same shape, keep your fingers in the same position, but you're just gonna slide up one fret. So now your pointer finger's on seven and your other finger is on nine, but staying on the same two strings. We're gonna play that chord just one time. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hey! So I moved up right there, let's do it, let's do it together. One, two, here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh! Okay, at this point, we have a little, tiny little pause from the strumming, and after you play that chord, you're gonna slide your hand over until your pointer finger goes to the second fret, but we're still gonna stay on the same two strings. This like hand shape with our fingers in this position, that's called an octave. This is a B, this is also a B. So they're the same note, but a high and low version. This is an E, this is an E, this is an E, blah, blah. whatever, I'm saying a bunch of stuff. This is the octave hand position, and we're keeping it in that same octave hand position for these first three chords. Check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, uh. So I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, slid up to the next fret, strummed down once, then took my time, but slid all the way back to the second and fourth frets, and then strummed as soon as I got down here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, uh. A lot of off beats in this song. One, two, do it again. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, uh. When we get down to the second fret thing down here, I think we're gonna strum it seven times. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey. Seven. We do. It's true. It's true. I was not lying. We do it seven times. So we are halfway through the riff. That's the good news. Bad news is the first half is the easy half. Let's play the first half one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, oh. That was it. Okay, great. Great, we got it. Can you? T I'm already losing my voice from all of the bad starts I've already recorded and deleted of this video. 
That's how today is going. Are you, what's that? You're ready to learn the hard, oh, uh, by the way, this whole first part, notice I'm just strumming down on every single chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hey! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This next part, however, we're gonna be doing a lot of ups and downs, so let's get into the difficult part of the song. What you're gonna do, after you strum this seven times, we have to get our hand into this position right here. So here's what's going on. There's a lot going on right here. My thumb comes up over the top of the neck and mutes the E string, just that top E string. The A string, the second string from the top, is open. My ring finger is on the sixth fret of the D string, the third string from the top. However, I also have my middle finger on the D string right behind my ring finger. The reason why is because we're gonna bend this note and I think it's really hard to bend with just one finger. When I try to bend with one finger, half the time my finger just slides off the string and it's a terrible, ho awful experience. Horrible and awful mixed together, awful. So I've got ring finger on the sixth fret of the D string, middle finger right behind it, kind of on the fifth fret, but it doesn't really matter what fret it's on. And then I'm also, and you know what? I wasn't sure what other, st well, I, I don't, uh, instead of telling you every thought that's in my head, how about I just tell you what you need to know. You want to mute the G string, the third string from the bottom. The way I'm doing that is when I play the sixth fret with my ring finger, the pad of my finger just kind of naturally leans onto the G string and mutes it. But then what sounds really great is if you can have the B string, the second string from the bottom open. It doesn't need to be open, but if we can hear that note, I think that sounds really cool. It sounds like the song. So we've got muted top string, open A string, sixth fret on the D string, muted G string, open B string, and then the high E string can either be muted or open. When I play it, when I play it, I think it tends to be muted. That's just the natural way my hand sits. So like I told you, there's a lot going on with this chord. Uh, let's just, let's just keep moving. Sound good? You're gonna strum this chord, and right after you strum it, you're gonna bend that note, and then bend it back. So it's, you hear that? Let's practice that a few times. Does it hurt yet? Is it hurting your finger? Uh, let's take it from the beginning and then just practice mute, uh, b uh, b b b b b b b bending that one note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey. Uh, 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 um. That's all there is to it. At this point, we're gonna go like this. Uh, yeah, we're gonna bend it. Then, once you get back to its normal spot, you're gonna strum it again, strumming down, then strumming up. Whoa, I got all disoriented here. I think it's too hot in here, guys. Way too hot. I'm definitely gonna die. So, at this point, uh, what happened? Oh, we did a bendy part. Then strum down, keeping your fingers in the same position. Then switch to your pointer finger on the fourth fret of the D string. Keep your thumb muting the E string. Get rid of your ring finger and middle finger and just have your pointer finger on the fourth fret, that third string from the top. Strum up on that chord. Then slide your pointer finger down to the second fret on the D string and strum down, up, down. So that was down on the sixth fret, up on the fourth fret, and then down, up, down on the second fret. When we put that whole second part together, it sounds like this. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four. Nope, messed up. One, two, three, four. One more time, and. Great. Right after that down, up, down on the second fret, we're gonna strum up on the fourth fret. I just use my ring finger. I think what Billy Corgan actually does is just moves his pointer finger up to the fourth fret. So it's like down, up, down, up, like that. 
This is, you're gonna love this part. I know you, you're gonna love this part. On the second fret, we went down, up, down. Then move your pointer finger up to the fourth fret and strum up, down. Move your pointer finger up to the sixth fret and strum up, down. Then using either your ring finger or your pinky, reach up to the ninth fret on the D string. It's gotta be an up, right? We must strum up, so it's gonna be down, up, down, four, down, six, down, nine, going up. Whoa! Really slowly, strum by strum, starting from that second fret. One and two, and here we go. And down, up, down, four, down, six, down, nine, going up. Start from the bendy part. One, two, three, four, bendy. I love it. Once we get to that nine, we're just gonna strum up, up, down. That's all there is to it, guys. Gang, that's the hardest part of the song. I know we like talked through the notes. We didn't actually learn it yet. And I know I just called you gang. Apparently you guys are gang now. Hey gang. Pizza party tonight at my house. Pizza party. Take it from the top. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Five, six, seven, bend. How'd it go? Did it go great? Was it the best experience you've ever had in your entire life? We're gonna do it, look, look. Yeah, you're ready for the next part of the song, but but I wanna make sure you know this part, and I, this part's hard. This part is hard. So instead of letting you, instead of just letting you rush ahead to the next part, let's go through this part so slowly, it's gonna make you sick. It's gonna make you lose all of your houses and all of your homes because of how slow it is. One and two and one, two, buckle my shoe. What we're about to do is we're about to play that whole thing those times in a row. Spanish for two, surprised you didn't know that. One, two, three, four. That's the coolest part of 1979 by Smashing Pumpkins. I say coolest part, I think what I mean is the most iconic part. But now we still have to learn the little interlude part of the riff. We still need to learn the chorus and we still need to learn the bridge. Let's get right to it. Uh, when I say interlude, here's what I mean. After you play that verse riff three times with the sing, he, okay, look. He does it once at the very beginning. The drums go Then the guitar goes all by itself. He actually does the rhythm ever so slightly different the first time. I'll show you that at the end because it's not really necessary. It's just gonna stress you out. Then the singing starts and they do the riff three times. After they do the riff three times, it does this short little, what I'm gonna call the interlude. It goes like this. If you didn't notice, my pinky did not know what to do just then. It was searching around for the note the whole time. We're gonna play these two big old chords after we play the riff three times. Would you please play top string open? Done, easy. Ring finger on the ninth fret of the A string, the second string from the top. Pointer finger on the seventh fret of the D string, the third string from the top. And your pinky, your tiny little baby little pinky is gonna play the ninth fret on the G string. Now the G string is the third string from the bottom of the guitar. The bottom two strings, the E and B, are gonna be open. Just give that chord a big ol' strum. Look at that beautiful chord, don't you love it? I legitimately, I legitimately love this chord. I'm in love with this chord. We're gonna learn a strumming pattern to go with this chord, but first let me show you what the next chord is. You got this one, then we're gonna go to this one. 
So this one, it looks like a bar chord. It is not a bar chord. There are actually zero none zip nada bar chords in this song. Pointer finger on the seventh fret of the top string. Do not smash down like it's a bar chord. Just play the top string. Keep your pointer finger away from the other strings. Then, I, for a second there, I was thinking we were learning a different song and I got very confused. Put your ring finger on the ninth fret of the A string, the second string from the top. Then your pinky, baby little pinky, is gonna play the ninth fret on the D string, the third string from the top. Your middle finger is gonna play the eighth fret on the G string, that's the third string from the bottom. Look at this, see how it looks like a bar chord if you're familiar with bar chords, but then you look over to the side and you're like, oh, it was a trick, it's not a bar chord at all. Bottom two strings are open. There it is. Beautiful, vibrant, shimmering, shiny chord of a chord. Surprised I haven't knocked over my coffee yet. It's precariously balanced. All right, we've got those two chords. We've got this chord. We got this chord. So let's talk about the strumming. I'm kind of delaying this because I don't actually remember the strumming, so I have to figure it out as I'm talking without sounding like I'm trying to figure it out. I got it, that was easy. Pfft, why was I worried about that? On the first chord, which again was zero, nine, seven, nine, open, open, you're gonna go down, 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 up, down. Let's do it together. One, two, here we go. And down, 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 up, down. One, Two, here we go, and down, 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 up, down. Then you're gonna switch to the other one, it was seven, nine, nine, eight, zero, zero, and you're gonna strum up. So it's pow, pow, pucky to pow. Two, three, four, pow, pow, pucky to pow. I know what you're thinking. Stuart, I just learned these chords. I can't switch that fast. Yeah, I know, you gotta practice it. But also, here's a little tip. I said on the first chord, you go down, 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 up, down. On that last strum down, I'm actually lifting up my fingers to get ready for the next chord. So I'm actually strumming the open strings on that last strum down so that I'm ready with the new chord on the up. So watch, watch very closely, watch my fingers. Down, 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 up, lift, up. See how I started moving my fingers early? Except for my ring finger. My ring finger doesn't need to change from chord to chord, so I'm just keeping it on that ninth fret on the A string the whole time. Watch this, watch this. Down, 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 up, lift, up on the new chord. On the second chord, we're gonna go up, up, down, up, up, down, up. So that's up, up, down, up, up, down, up. One more time, two, three, four. Up, up, down, up, up, down, up. But obviously practicing the rhythm to that one chord by itself doesn't help that much. We've got to put it all together with the other chord. Start on this chord, play both chords with me. One, two, three, four. Down, 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 up, lift, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. What we have to do now, before, mm, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? Let's, let's practice playing the entire riff to the verse. And then we will go into that little interlude thing. And then I'll show you the next part of the song. So we're just gonna do the riff one time and then go straight into these chords. You're not gonna be able to do it at all, but you can watch me do it. One, two, three, four. I messed up on the riff. I gotta do it again. I'm embarrassed. I went to seven instead of going to six. Sounded okay though. I should have just kept going. One, two, three, four. This is awful. I'm just gonna take a nap. One, two, here we go. Then it goes right back into the riff again. So here's here's what happens up till here in the song. And then I swear we're just gonna cruise through the rest of it. The drum intro. The best beatboxer in the world. Uh, then 
The guitar riff happens once, all by its lonesome. Then the singing comes in and the riff happens three times. After the three times on the riff, we do those two chords we just learned. Then we do the riff another three times. Then we do those two chords again. Exactly the same. Then we go to the chorus of the song. The chorus, I will show it to you now. First thing, top string open, open E, seventh fret on the A string, second string from the top, then ring finger plays the ninth fret on the D string, the third string from the top, Pinky plays the ninth fret on the G string, the third string from the bottom, and then the bottom two strings, the high E and B, are open. You're gonna do this. You're gonna play just the top string by itself, then a big old strum of all the strings strumming down. So we've got top strum. Boom. It's like the, the big moment in the chorus. Then on this same chord, let's see. You're gonna go like this. You strum top string down, and then on the same chord, strum down, up, down. At this point, things are gonna change a little bit. You are going to lift up your ring finger. You're gonna slide your pointer finger back to the sixth fret, but keep your pinky on the ninth fret of the G string. It might feel like a crazy stretch. If you feel like your fingers aren't long enough, it probably means your thumb is up over the top over here, and I want you to bring it back here. If your thumb is on the back of the neck, you should have plenty of stretchability-ness to go between six on the A string and nine on the G string with your pointer finger mute the D string. So check this out. First chord, 0, 7, 9, 9. We're gonna go top string down, down, up, down, and then up on that crazy stretchy chord we just did. One, two, three, four. Top, strum, down, up, down, up. Then on the same chord, we're gonna strum up, down. So we go up, up, down. It's kind of a gnarly sounding chord. It's okay, it's supposed to sound that way. That's how you know it's working. On this gnarly stretchy chord, you're gonna strum up, up, down, and then you're actually gonna strum up one more time, but as you're strumming up that last time, you're gonna start heading down to the second fret on the A string and the fourth fret on the G string, just like we did in the verse. So here's what happens. We go up, up, down, up. So see how I start heading down there as I'm strumming up. That makes no sense. One, two, let's start from the chorus. Top string, down, down, up, down, stretch, up, down, move, down, up, down. So when you get to the second and fourth fret, you're gonna strum down, up, down. Then we literally play the second half of the verse riff. So that means this is the chorus. Look, we go, uh. I'm, well, okay, that, okay. One, two, three, four, and five. Hey! I played it twice for you, because it's twice as nice. The city's so nice, we had to name it nice. This city is named nice. Okay! Here's what happens, here's what happens for the chorus. We play that riff, that thing, those two separate parts, three times. So we do the whole big pow chicken, and then we do that, then we do that, then we do it again, then we do it a third time. Then we play two chords. I'm trying to remember what the two chords are though. Oh, I, okay, I think I got it. I think, I think I can. I think I know what it is. No, I gotta listen to the recording. I knew what they were the whole time. I was just doubting myself. After we do that three times, we play the same two chords with the same rhythm that we did for our little interlude. We're gonna go. Remember those two? If you don't, you can go back and look. I'm not gonna show them to you again. We already did it. Then it goes back to the verse. It does the verse uh, exactly the same as it did the first time. 
That's not true. I just lied to you. So we do the main verse riff is exactly the same. When I say the verse riff, you know what I'm talking about, this part. Um, but here's where things change a little bit. In the second verse, after we play the riff three times, instead of doing this chord and this chord, we're gonna do this chord and this chord. It's a little, it's actually easier, check it out. We've got pointer finger on the second fret of the top string, ring finger on the fourth fret of the next one, pinky on the fourth fret of the next one, and middle finger on the third fret of the next one. Bottom two strings open, so that's two, four, four, three, open, open. You're gonna go down, 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 up, down. And then take this whole shape and move it one, two, three frets up until your pointer finger's on the fifth fret. So now we've got five, seven, seven, six. And strum up, up, down, up, up, down, up. So that's down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Second verse then goes like this. We do the riff three times. Pretend this is the third one. And then down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And we do the riff again. I think we go back. Is the, first, the second verse shorter than the first co verse chorus? Riff? Yeah, the second verse is shorter than the first verse. I'm not dumb. I don't know why you keep calling me dumb. I'm a smart person. I knew it was shorter. And you can tell by my body language that I'm a smart person. That's, this is what a smart person does. They go like this for absolutely no reason. So th what that means is for the, for the second verse, we play the riff once all by itself. Then we do it three times with the singing. Then we do those two chords. Down, 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 up, down, up. Then we do the chorus exactly the same as we did it before. We play it three times, three times through the chorus, and then, and then, and then we go to the bridge. The bridge is m might be my favorite part of the song, and it has three chords in it for the most part, and then three main chords, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Uh, and it's, it's fun to play, it's so powerful, it's a moving part of the song, it moves me. It moves me to emotional tears. After we play the chorus riff three times in the second chorus, we go to the bridge which as f is as follows. It goes like this, it goes. Let me show it to you. First chord we've done before. It was part of our little interlude section. Pointer finger on the seventh fret of the E string. Ring finger on the ninth fret of the A string, the second string from the top. Pinky on the ninth fret of the D string, the third string from the top. Middle finger on the eighth fret of the G string, the third string from the bottom. Bottom two strings are open. Uh, we're gonna strum this chord. The way I like to do it is how it kind of matches on the studio recording. I just strum down. I feel like it's a little more driving when I strum down. You can also go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up if that floats your boat. But what floats my boat is just going down, 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 down. And I'm aiming mostly for just the top few strings, but I'll hit all the strings every once in a while when I feel like it. We're gonna play this chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's what I thought, 16 times. But don't count to 16, that's too hard, because you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, You're gonna count to eight, two times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So much easier. Then this is the weirdest chord switch in the song. You've got this chord all ready to go. And then you're gonna go like, I feel like there's a lot of shadow. I feel like there's a lot of shadow. I need to adjust my lighting situation. I'm also squinting the whole time because I have lights shining in my retinas. Retina's part of the eye, right? Quick little, look at the shadow from my cot. Oh, it's like I'm covered in gloom. Too much shadow. You guys gotta do something about that. After you play this eight times two, 16 times, your ring finger is going to move up to the ninth fret of the top string. See how that my ring finger moves up there. That's what happens first. Your ring finger goes up there and then your pointer finger goes down to, is that right? Yeah, to the seventh fret of the A string, the second string from the top. So basically your ring finger and your pointer finger are switching strings. Um, when I watch live videos, 
uh, Billy Corgan playing it, you can tell he moves this finger first and then that finger right after. I think it's just easier for him to do it that way. You can also do them at the same time. What do I do? Yeah, I, this one hops up and then that one moves down. It's a little bit of a tricky switch, but here's the crucial, vital, never-ending story, most important part of the switch. Do not let your middle finger and your pinky move at all. If those lift up even for a second, you're screwed. You're screwed. My name's Stuart. Welcome to Guitar Lessons with Stuart. Like and subscribe if this video is something that you're, that you are, uh, um. Now, after, okay. We're gonna strum one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This second chord, you're only gonna strum seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you're gonna play this guy right here. So this is very similar to the first chord. We're just moved backwards two frets. So that's pointer finger on five, ring finger on seven, pinky on seven, middle finger on six, bottom two strings open. So that's five, seven, seven, six, open, open. This one I'm pretty sure we do. We're gonna play like eight times or whatever. See, this is the part of the video where we're almost done, so I just stopped caring. Uh, let's play, let's play all three of those bridge chords slowly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we're gonna do that this chord nine times. Nine times. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I believe. Nine times. You noticed that in this video, like, I always get distracted, but I feel like in this video, I'm just yelling out things that have nothing to do with anything. Uh, you play these three chords in this quantity three times, and that's the bridge. After we do that three times, as always, I don't remember what comes next, so we're gonna play through the bridge all three times. You can practice along with me, and then that will refresh my memory about what comes next. One, two, three, Four. For the third time, we go. I think, right? Right? Nope, nope, that's not it. You blew it. You blew it again. I was so close. It goes second fret chord. Remember that one? You did that one before. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then up to the seventh fret with the same shape. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. And then it goes back to the riff. And then, I don't know, is there a chorus again? I don't know, but then how do we end the song? We end the song as such unto as this. We're playing the riff, we go. And we just strum this big old chord. It's that first chord of the chorus where it's open, seven, nine, nine, open, open. And we just strum that chord once instead of starting over the riff. So here's what's gonna happen now. That's the whole song. We've learned all the parts. Yes, there's some lead guitar parts that the other guitarist does in the studio recording, but we're not gonna learn those. This is like the main guitar part. If you wanna go learn all the other little like, you can do that on your own time, okay? You can do it after school. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to play this thing all the way through. Medium slow together. One, two, three, four. This is where the singing starts. I'm gonna mess up and you just have to deal with it. What was that? That was a gosh darn accident. Two, three, four. This is 
where the singing starts, right here. the third time on the course, I always forget this part. We do that. This is the third time. And then the bridge. I want to start from the bridge. I just remembered. I, I just remembered I was going to tell you the other rhythm for the first time he plays the riff in the song. Let's do it. But, but, the very, the very beginning of the song goes. So that's, this is what he does. He does, the beginning's the same. Then he goes, the bendy part. Instead of going ba 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 ba, instead of going six six four two, he goes bend six four two. He just waits a little longer to get to that two. That's not helpful at all. He goes bend strum six, strums up on four, and then he strums up on two, and then up on four. Like that. Then up on six, and then up on nine. So it goes like two, three, four, buck up, buck up, buck up, ba bow, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum. 
It's a little more like, uh, 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 uh. But he only does that when he plays the riff and he doesn't sing. That wasn't helpful. I left this ever bad taste in everybody's mouth because I didn't explain the last part. Now the video's over.